Hello, I'm Mario Anderson and welcome to In Focus Kentucky where we look at issues that matter to you right here in the Bluegrass State and we'll talk to the lawmakers, community organizers and people like you who help shape those policies. On today's show, we're taking a look at school safety concerns here in Kentucky. We'll speak with local elected officials about the issue and also visit with a group who is demanding that those same lawmakers establish common sense gun laws to help prevent any more tragedy. From Madison County Schools hiring 20 new full-time safety monitors in schools across its county to Knox County creating an app for students to report potential threats to the approval of metal detectors in all Fayette County Public Schools, steps are being taken to keep the elementary, middle and high school students of Kentucky safe as they attend classes. Coming up today, you'll hear from Congressman Andy Barr, who represents Kentucky's 6th Congressional District, the group Moms Demand Action, and will take you to the first ever March for Our Lives rally, which is a student-led demonstration that supports tighter gun control laws. But first, we caught up recently with John Akers, who is the executive director of the Kentucky Center for School Safety. Akers shared his thoughts following the tragedies of Stoneman Douglas High School in F Florida and here in Kentucky at Marshall County High School, where multiple kids lost their lives due to school shootings. If you look at what happened down at Marshall, our job was behind the scenes support and providing them with information throughout that week that they dealt with and then uh, just providing uh, any kind of information that they may need. And uh, in fact, I went down there uh, myself to watch the kids come back to school on that Friday. And so uh, we're strictly a behind the scenes group providing them with information. Now, as far as what we tell schools, um, every school is supposed to have an emergency operating plan. Okay, and that plan is supposed to be reviewed with their first responders in the summertime and then uh, reviewed with their site-based council, then reviewed with their staff members before school starts so that they have uh, anything that they needed to tweak in their emergency operating planning. Um, uh, they would do that in the summertime, then let the teachers know um, what the changes were, if any. And if you have new teachers, you need to be able to uh, um, teach them from the very start. There are responses that they have, and if you want to zero in on active shooters, we, we support a run, hide, lockdown, uh, and fight, but the fight only pertains to teachers. And let me explain that. <clears throat> if a uh, shooter should come in like he did in um, Marshall County and the kids are in the commons area there, there's no way you can lock that down. So we tell the kids to run. There are, there are four or five exits there where they could run out and, what, and that's what they did. Shootings primarily take place before school, during lunchtime, and after school. And, and um, those places like that, you don't have options of locking down, so you go ahead and run the best you can to try to get away from the shooting, as simple as that. If uh, shooting takes place during a transition time between classes, we want the kids to get into the rooms as quickly as possible, teachers lock them down, and if the doors are locked and there's some kids left in the hallway, then we tell the kids to go hide somewhere, bathrooms, maybe continue to run away from it, that type of thing. You're never gonna have a perfect scenario when it comes to a shooting situation like that. Uh, once the school is in lockdown, uh, we want the teachers to barricade the doors so that uh, the perpetrator can't come into the room easily. And, uh, um, and primarily you need to know this too, that uh, there's a whole new, um, I shouldn't say new because it's been going on since 1999, protocol called an active shooter protocol that law enforcement uh, employs. And basically they go straight for the noise as they say, they go straight for the shooting. If they see people who are injured in the hallways and stuff like that, they don't stop. They go straight to take out the shooter first, okay? Then they'll come back. Um, we barricade the doors um, just as an extra precautionary method. Um, no one so far, knock on wood, has broken into a lockdown door and shot people. But if there is an opportunity for a shooter to uh, shoot a door open, so to speak, we'd want to have other barricades there. The group Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America is asking for what they call common sense gun laws to be enacted on the federal level and locally here in Kentucky as well. Lindsay Sugarman is an advocate representing the Moms Demand Action uh, in Lexington mm -hmm. here and she's discussing her group's concerns about the need for gun reform. Thanks so much for joining us, Lindsay. Well, thank you for having us. 
And let's uh, get right into it. Uh, talk to us, uh, what is Moms Demand Action? Okay. Well, Moms Demand Action is a grassroots nonpartisan movement. And we've got people of chapters in every state in America, and we're working for common sense gun laws. We're working for things that will bring people together and change the culture of gun violence. And we did some research as well, uh, finding out that the Moms Against Drunk Driving group is kind of how this group was actually created, correct? Exactly. It started a little over five years ago with the Sandy Hook shooting. A stay-at-home mom named Shannon Watts was watching this and she got on Facebook and said, we've got to do something. And she had thousands of followers immediately. And she, she helped uh, mold this group to be like Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Mothers Against Drunk Driving successfully changed the culture of drinking and driving and we're trying to change the gun culture. So that's why they we're modeled after them. And I should say, it's mothers and others. You don't have to be a mother, and you don't have to be a female. So we have lots of others. <laughs> and talk about the difference between the, uh, the national chapter overall compared to the Kentucky chapter, and then even uh, what the K Kentucky chapter is doing compared to what you're doing here in Lexington. Well, MOMS is interesting because we are connected to the national group, and you have a, a lot of common interests, a lot of common uh, goals with the national program, but we also have a local focus, and each state is a chapter. So Kentucky has been working very hard to educate our legislators on some of the bills that they're looking at during the session that we feel like we, we, we feel like some of them are not research-based, so we're trying to educate them that they can change their minds and vote against some of these bills. And that's what we're doing locally. And speak on that, what are some of these bills that uh, you are uh, advocating uh, uh, in regards to? Well, two of the ones that have b both been heard this year and last year is the permitless carry. Right now in Kentucky, to have a concealed carry, you, have, you get a background check, which background checks are one of the things we're really stressing and you also do some training and if you didn't have to get a permit you wouldn't get the background check or the training and we think that we should keep that law the way it is. The other thing there's several law, several um, proposals as far as guns on campus both K through 12 and college campuses and we feel like we don't need any more guns. That adding teacher, teachers with guns is not the answer to gun violence in the schools. Now, would you all uh, describe this group as anti-gun at all? Oh, absolutely not. Lots of our members are gun owners. We're just, they're responsible gun owners and they want other people to be responsible. We, we, we are strong advocates of the Second Amendment. It just, we want to keep guns out of the hands of people who are a danger to themselves or to other people. And I think most gun owners agree with that. And I know uh, that when the Marshall County shooting uh, happened over at that high school, uh, the Moms Demand Action, Kentucky Chapter is one of those, was one of the first organizations to publicly uh, kind of speak out about that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, talk about uh, the importance of uh, being at the forefront of that conversation. Well, anytime there's a school shooting, it, it affects all of us. And especially if, if your volunteer efforts are working with gun violence, you, you just, it, it, it takes your breath. And the Marshall shooting, those were our kids, those were Kentucky kids. And so, of course, we were very in, involved with them immediately. And the, the students and teachers in the school there are survivors now. And that's, we work with, our umbrella group is Every Town for Gun Safety, and there's a whole group of survivors, it's a survivor network. Anyone who's personally been impacted by gun violence is a survivor. And it's one of those things that it's not just the schools, but the communities, too. We work very closely with a lot of people who've lost loved ones, some have lost their children to gun violence. So anytime there's a shooting, whether it be in the school or in the community, we, we want to be there to support the people. Now, were some of uh, members from your organization, did you all make it down to uh, Marshall County? To, oh, to yes, yes, our, our state leadership, in fact, after the Parkland shooting, but the, we had the Marshall County and then shortly thereafter the Parkland shooting, in Kentucky as well as the nation, we found so many new members. People just came to us, they wanted to get involved. What can I do? It was sort of like Shannon with, her, with the Sandy Hook. It's like, what can I do? I need to do something. And so we've had so many new members and there's a new chapter in Marshall. The, the state leadership went down and worked with some of the moms, some of the survivors and other community members we have a new chapter there, we have a new chapter in Bowling Green, we have a new chapter in Bourbon County, Paris. We, we're starting a chapter in Berea, Frankfurt, Northern Kentucky. It's, it, it's 
absolutely amazing how many people have come to us and said they want to get involved. Um, and uh, recently the March for Our Lives rally took place uh, across the country, across the world, uh, but here in Lexington I know the Moms Demand Action uh, organization was there uh, despite the weather that was outside. Uh, but talk about uh, the importance of that rally and uh, you were in attendance uh, as well. Well, we both were there with very cold hands. That's right. <laughs> I think the exciting thing about that rally is that we had over a thousand people in freezing rain. It was the most miserable weather I've ever been in and it was one of the most heartwarming experiences because people came out in that weather to support these young people. And I think what's happened is the, the country is really looking at this issue more thoroughly because of the articulate youth we have. The, the Parkland, you know, when Sandy Hook, that, that shooting, those were elementary kids, but we've got high school kids and they're very determined high school kids. And so on a national level we have those, folks and then on the local level it, you saw the young people leading the effort here we've got some survivors who have stepped up and want to speak out we have other other people who they, they're worried about safety in their schools and they're worried about safety in the community and i do think it's nice that the the effort is expanding its focus because most people that die from gun violence it's not in the schools it's in the community and it's a it's a public health issue really and so we've got, if we can get everybody talking together, I think we can make some progress. And do you think uh, with, with that progress, uh, having the, the kids and young folks' uh, voices speak out is important? Oh, absolutely. Having young people say, no, you know, not one more, no, enough is enough, that, that's, I think the legislators are listening to them. And it's, this is an issue that is nonpartisan. It really shouldn't be a divisive thing. And I think that people need to come together and the, in the, find common ground and make some changes. Because b background checks, 95% of Americans agree with background checks. And that's one of the main focuses as far as Moms Demand Action. Coming up, more from Moms Demand Action Representative Lindsey Sugarman. And we also hear from United States Congressman Andy Barr on what is happening in Washington on the topic of school safety. Stick with us. You're watching In Focus, Kentucky. 